Hello viewers, welcome to Elim TV. As station where we are going to learn and interact together. We are going to have our biology from 4 lesson 5 and the, uh, whereby your tutor will be me, Mr. Gerald. We are going to handle the topic on um, genetics and the subtopic, uh, the, sub, uh, the practical application of genetics. But before that, uh, we are going to have the uh, following lesson goals whereby by the end of the lesson you should be able to uh, state two practical applications of genetics let us begin uh, we're going to have an explanation of the plant and animal breeding where we will say uh, knowledge of genetics has been put to uh, practical use in uh, areas ranging from plants and animal breeding we also have uh, other areas which include blood transfusion and also genetic uh, counseling but in this lesson we are going to deal with the plant and animal breeding. Over time, human beings have been breeding plants and animals by selectively choosing those with desirable qualities. This process is referred to as artificial selection. Artificial selection is done uh, either by any breeding or cross breeding. Any breeding is useful for retaining desirable qualities and between closely related uh, individuals. Um, in, uh, however, in breeding increases the chances of undesirable or harmful recessive genes expressing themselves in the phenotype. Uh, these are examples of what we are calling the in breeding uh, in um, animals. Let us try to observe these uh, di diagrams over here. Uh, we are saying in breeding in increases the chances of undesirable or harmful recessive genes expressing themselves in the phenotype. When you say the phenotype here, we mean uh, the physical appearance. For this reason, crossbreeding has been preferred for purposes of increasing what we call heterozygosity. Uh, it has been observed that offspring resulting from crossbreed between two genetically uh, dissimilar lines often possess uh, beneficial characteristics not shown by either of the parents. This principle is known as hybrid figure and has been put to good use in plant and animal breeding. For example, an example of a crossbreeding in oil palm, let us now try to look at uh, the breeding in plants. So we are saying an example of crossbreeding in oil palms shows that a durable uh, variety of oil has a narrow mesocarp yielding little oil, thick endocarp making oil extraction difficult but has a large kernel for kernel oil production. I uh, can have an example of uh, a plant which uh, gives oil which is the Pisifera variety of oil palm as a wide mesocarp yielding high quantities of oil, thin endocarp allowing easier oil extraction and a small kernel yielding low quantities of kernel oil. When Dura and Pisifera varieties, uh, which are on our diagram, uh, they are crossed, the ten Tenera variety is produced. It has, uh, it has the good qualities of both the varieties. It has thick mesocarp yielding high quantities of oil, relatively thin endocarp for ease of oil extraction. Another example is in cattle, uh, whereby the Hereford, which uh, is being represented on our, our screen, um, is an English breed contributes high beef production and quick maturation. The Boran from Kenya contributes uh, disease resistance and the ability to feed and grow on a uh, dry pasture. A cross between an Hereford bull and a Boran cow yields a suitable hybrid with all these qualities. Polyploidy has been quite useful in plant breeding. Hybrid polyploids are now quite among uh, the plants that are grown. Uh, for instance, the original wheat had a diploid number of 4 chromosomes, but the commercial wheat has either 28 or 42. It is believed that the tetraploid wheat arose from a cross between the original diploid wheat and a wild grass, followed by doubling of the chromosome number to form a fertile hybrid. These breeds were selected for their high yields. Other phenotypic characteristics which have been selected for modern agricultural uh, purposes include one, we have got early maturity in both animals and the plants, uh, resistance, and also another one is resistance to diseases. I hope these are the important reasons why a crossbreed, uh, crossbreeding is very important. We have got, they have got increased length of productive season. We also have adaptations of, to local conditions such as the amount of rainfall or we can have uh, soil. Uh, flowers such as the roses, the Hawkeye ETC, are selectively bred from their color, shape, and aroma. High yields in terms of milk production, egg, and fruit production. 
and we have got is in um, harvesting uh, for example in the rice having done and said that we are going to have the following activity remember you are required to explain the real practical applications of genetics uh, for this uh, for more of this lesson you can refer to KLB secondary biology student book 4 which is the fourth edition uh, which has been satisfied by the Kenya Researcher Bureau and to get this lesson and many more of our biology lessons you can send us an SMS through the number that is on our screen or you subscribe to our YouTube channel which is the Limu TV or also you subscribe to our Facebook page which is also a Limu TV or you tweet us at Limu TV underscore Kenya let us subscribe to all these channels so that we stay tuned and we are going to get um, more enjoyable biology lessons thank you